All right. Hello, everyone. This is Data Science Workflows Made Easy with myself, uh, Flavio, and Elliot here, who will walk you through doing uh, how you can build an internal workflows platform with Argo, Argo Workflows, Kubernetes, and Hera. First, a short bit about us. Uh, I'll invite Elliot back to actually introduce himself. Just getting the water ready. I'm Elliot. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Pipekit, uh, one of the Hera maintainers. You got two out of three up here. Uh, I've been contributing since late 2022. And I'm Flavio, I'm a software engineer at Zera Therapeutics. I originally created Hera at a different therapeutics company um, in 2021, and I've been maintaining it uh, ever since. Back to Elliot. Uh, a quick bit about PipeKit. We're a team of Argo workflows and Hera maintainers and experts who can help you get the most out of Argo and Kubernetes. Uh, we have a control plane product uh, for Argo workflows that helps you use a uh, multi-cluster and you get granular RBAC. Ask Tim if you want to know the details. I'm the Python guy. And at Zera Therapeutics, we're focused on designing drugs. We apply AI methods to design biologic that are evaluated experimentally, that then drives, which, which then drives our understanding of diseases and our understanding of new biology that we then use to improve the drugs that we design. In this talk, we're going to do a walkthrough of what Hera is. We're going to talk about the intimate relationship between Hera and script templates in Argo workflows. We're going to talk about the local developer experience that's powered by Hera hooks, which we'll present soon. And finally, authoring Hera workflows um, and creating Hera workflows by walking through a, a sample analysis that Elliot will show us. So you're likely attending this talk because you're interested in Kubernetes or you're already familiar with Kubernetes and Argo Workflows or Hera, and if not, welcome. Um, so briefly, Argo Workflows is currently the de facto Kubernetes orchestration engine. It's um, a scalable Kubernetes and container native product that's used in a variety of domains like uh, therapeutic discovery or self-driving cars and finance. And it's also vendor neutral. It's licensed under Apache 2.0. It has a growing and extremely active um, community. On the left panel here, we have an example uh, job in Argo Workflows that um, represents a canonical map reduce job. It starts with probably some data, it splits it up, it applies a map operation to every single chunk, and finally it kind of gathers everything uh, back together in a reduce operation. The interesting thing here is that all, almost all of the circles in this diagram represent one, point, one pod in the directed acyclic graph in Kubernetes. And what's interesting is that you can configure the you know resources and all sorts of uh, um, options on these pods, either dynamically or statically. You can encode just about any workflow structure in Argo workflows, including things like recursion or launch arbitrary Kubernetes resources. Um, you can do uh, shareable steps and uh, scale these things up to, I think, more than 10,000 pods at a time. But just like a lot of other products in the cloud native uh, ecosystem in Kubernetes specifically, uh, Argo workflows is configured via YAML files. And that is that represents a challenge uh, for a lot of users because they have to be familiar with all of these features that they have access to in Kubernetes, like annotations and images and things like that. And that's where Hera comes in. Hera is the Python SDK for Argo workflows. It is fully featured, which means you can encode anything that you can do in Argo workflows, but in Hera and in Python. Because of the Python experience that Hera facilitates, um, it still, it still exposes all of the details that you have access to in Argo workflows and Kubernetes, which can still be um, very intimidating for users, but it offers features such as uh, hooks and other types of APIs that actually facilitate adoption of, of, of Argo workflows. And because it's also Python native, you have access to actually integrating all of, uh, all, all of that with your CI CD platform. You can do testing or linting and all of the other things that you can do in, Py in plain Python, but on your Argo workflows objects now. While Hera is, has a severe uh, bias towards Python, it's not very dogmatic about it. You still have the option of using it with your GitOps platform if you're so inclined. You can still use Hera to declare all of your workflows in Python, but then export them to YAML and integrate them with existing tooling, um, such as submitting things directly to the Argo server via the Argo CLI, or you can rely on Hera and just issue requests directly to, uh, to, directly to the Argo server. Uh, but as I mentioned before, you still have access to all of the things um, that uh, in, in Kubernetes through Argo workflows, which can still be challenging to a lot of users, and that's where hooks come in. 
Hooks um, are essentially APIs that allow you to intercept the creation of, of all of uh, the objects that you can declare in Hera that represent Argo Workflows objects. For example, you can intercept the workflow and modify it for your users. You can intercept scripts or containers and things like that. So for instance, if you have a specific authentication mechanism with OICD or any other or any um, authentication provider that kind of sits in front of the Argo server, you can make Hera call your authentication provider to give you something like a bearer token that you need in order to authenticate with the Argo server prior to submitting your workflow. And the biggest advantage is that none of your users need to know this because if you're part of the platform team, you can set up all of these hooks for users so it abstracts that away. And you can also do things like intercept scripts for machine learning training uh, jobs and attach the right node selectors or GPU resources, um, set up image defaults. For example, if you're creating images on every single commit and your users are submitting workflows through Hera, you can use hooks in order to set the right image with the right Git hash or however you're annotating these images in order to use the correct image for your user. And that means, again, they don't have to worry about those types of details, which can be very, um, very empowering. Lastly, the, one of the biggest benefits for an, a platform team that uses Hero hooks in this style is that it, you also get to scale your team. You no longer have to worry about things like supporting users write YAML or um, kind of debug whatever Argo might be missing from like some annotations or whatever. And that means you can productize your platform even more and empower your, your uh, users to, do, to, to focus on what they want to do, which is like write Python as usual, whatever business logic they're concerned with, experimentation, um, and other things within your domain. With that, I'll pass it to Elliot to uh, walk over the script template and the Hero Runner in the next slides. Thank you. So my section is going to be a bit more rapid. So there are code examples. So get ready with your cameras or whatever you want to do. Um, so the key features of Hero. Uh, making it the go-to Python SDK of Argo workflows, beginning with script templates. We're in Python land, so it's a good candidate. So first to explain the term inline we use in Hero in the docs and throughout this talk, uh, we use this to describe script templates that dump the whole Python function verbatim into the source field of the script template. If those words didn't make sense, you might be new to Argo workflows. You'll see Hero also adds some pre-processing steps to load your variables, just JSON loading, pretty basic. Uh, and if you use Hera to generate the equivalent YAML from the Python, you'll see the source code is being run through the Python command in the image that you specify. So you can think of it as running Python scripts from the command line. And to get started with inline script templates, you just need an image that contains your dependencies. So for anything using plain old Python with the built-in libraries, you can use official Docker images. But inline script templates have uh, a fair few drawbacks. Your function will start to look a bit odd as you can't reference anything defined outside of the function scope. So your imports and constants must all be defined within the function. And if you like helper functions, they also have to be within that function. So you'll have very long and very complex function definitions. And then here you'll see we're using a print statement because trying to use anything else in an inline script template is uh, gonna have a bad time. So it's not the simplest thing to test. Plus with the previous point of having very long functions, you'll just find it pretty difficult to test. And yet another drawback of handling uh, artifacts in inline script templates, you'll need to open the file and read from it all manually and messing around with it. And if you want custom data types that aren't just JSON uh, basic ones, uh, tough luck, that's all you can use. Uh, so what's the answer to, for all these problems? Runner script templates, let me explain. Uh, when using runner script templates, your script will run with the Hera runner, which is built into Hera, and you can use native Python with no strings attached, no pun intended. You can return complex values from functions and test them locally like a normal function. And when running on Argo, the return value is printed to standard out automatically for you. And to start using runner script templates, you need to specify the constructor as runner. So this is shorthand for choosing how to generate the YAML. And behind the scenes, there is an actual runner script constructor class. So this string is just a shorthand for that. And the Hero runner acts as the plumbing between your generic Python command and your function from your module, which is the actual entry point. So here you see the Python dash M means the modules, and then you're running the Hero runner, and then you're passing the actual entry point. And then we do some funky stuff with the source because input parameters are not supposed to be the source, but that's a secret for another time. 
The image used here is built from the code and dependencies, which includes Hera itself, to be able to use the Hera runner. And this touches on one of the drawbacks of using the Hera runner, which is that it will require a more complex CI CD setup, and you'll have a slightly longer iteration time when working on and testing your code on the cluster. But you'll find the benefits of runner scripts make using Python on Argo workflows much more intuitive. Your Python code is native, so you can arrange your module, files, and functions exactly how you like. And moving on to another feature, script annotations for the script runner. This makes your template definition much more flexible and being less prone to errors. You can use this special annotated Python type to store metadata, which in this case are the parameters and artifacts in and out of your template. And they, you can hold the description, an alternative name, and then we start to expand on that uh, in the next slide, where there's much more to this feature. So for parameters and artifacts alike, the Hera runner can deserialize your JSON into arbitrary Python uh, objects and then serialize them back out into JSON for Argo to understand. So a quick recap uh, after covering the basics about script templates. Inline script templates let you try out Hera more easily and they can help you prototype quickly. But for anything else you want the code to, where you want the code to be maintainable, testable, and generally readable, use runner templates. So now you have a few Python functions where you want to start arranging them on Argo. You'll need to write the workflow. In this section, we'll have a quick tour of the features of Hera that help you write workflows more easily in Python. So you write workflows in Hera using Python's context manager syntax, which mimics the YAML syntax, which helps bridge the gap between YAML and Python. So when you're looking at the docs, you'll, might, you'll see uh, how it relates to each other. And in this example workflow, you can see we have a single DAG called run training, which is calling some functions. And calling the functions in this way is another bit of syntactic sugar. So for some motivation, we can see there's a lot of boilerplate when creating tasks that make up a DAG. We have to write out the task itself. We have to give the task a name. We see that the name is repeated for the script template, along with the source function name, and so on and so on for all your other tasks. So Hera introduced a small bit of magic syntactic sugar, which looks like this, so that if you have a script decorator on a function, you can create tasks just by calling the function within a DAG context. The function then takes the same keyword arguments as a task, so you can see we're passing the arguments to the script template using the arguments keyword. But that's the only bit of magic we do. Another bit of syntactic sugar for constructing your DAG is the right shift operator, which lets you specify task dependencies. This looks pretty sensible. You can see data sets task goes into a scaling task, goes into the model training task. And uh, the, the syntax combines with Python lists to declare multiple dependencies at once. So the dependencies here will run the classic DAG diamond, uh, where A runs first, then both B and C run, and they must complete before D runs. And if you want to loop over some values, we can also do that in Hera. Here we're using two script templates where the generate script is printing a JSON list to standard out. And you can see we're using inline script templates just to make it nice and easy. And then this is used with the result attribute on the generator task, which is passed into the consume task, which will automatically loop over the values because that result is a list serialized as a JSON string. So in case the code wasn't making any sense, it looks like this, the DAG from the two scripts, which creates 11 task nodes as the consume task fans out over the values created by the generate task. So now we'll go over the process of actually writing. You're at your laptop, you wanna make a new workflow. So you start with writing some actual code and hopefully you do some tests. And then you can set the image used by your scripts with the handy shorthand of global config image. And then you can write the rest of your workflow definition. And now you have a workflow definition, you wanna use it, but wait, you've got to build an image from your code. So here we've got Docker building and pushing to Docker Hub. And then Argo is able to fetch that image when you submit your workflow or you can submit directly in Python. And how can we automate this fairly complex development lifecycle for better CI CD? You want some kind of continuous integration in your pull requests that probably runs a real workflow and makes sure it works, does the things you expect. So here we're demonstrating a way to build a new tagged image using GitHub workflows, Docker build and push action. And in the next step, you'll use the new image and set it to environment variable and then run a small Python script and in that Python script, we set the global config image using that environment variable. And then our workflow will run with the new image. 
And once you've got all your continuous integration done and you've merged to main, it's time for some continuous deployment. And here we show you how you can create a versioned workflow template, and that is tied to your Python code version. The GitHub workflow is similar to the CI example, but here we start by bumping the Python version using poetry and the GitHub release tag, which we assume is a string conforming to semantic versioning, so 1.2.3. Then you can use the same Docker build and push action. And finally, in a similar Python script, you build and release the new workflow template, which just means you're creating it on the cluster with the new version suffix. And again, in that script, you're using the global config image, but you are setting it directly as the Python package version. And you can also use the same version string in the name of the workflow template. And that will create a versioned workflow template on your cluster. So then class defaults and pre-build hooks mentioned by Flav earlier, they help when you want to use Hera as an internal platform. And you can set sensi sensible defaults for any of Hera's pydantic classes, such as containers, scripts, and more. So here we're setting the image with the shorthand, and then we're setting the script to use the runner script con constructor. And after that, we have a pre-build pre hook, and these allow a bit more flexibility to pre-process the object you want to mutate, which can include the workflows themselves, if you need to add labels or annotations, things like that. Now, a quick live demo, we'll see how this goes. I need to change my display to be using mirror, just one second. So here, hopefully you can see it, and zooming in a bit, right. So let's say you're starting with a scenario of a data set with diabetes predictions, outcomes, ones and zeros telling you, did this person get diabetes over the course of their lifetime based on these inputs? You might have used it yourself if you're a data science person, it's on Kaggle. Um, so first you'll load the data set, you split into features and your target, which is the outcome. You'll split the data, you'll do some scaling, so your uh, function, which is a very simple logistic regression here, is just dealing with basic numbers. Then you can do some predictions, evaluate, make some nice graphs, and that's basically it. So here's where it starts going wrong, but I'm gonna just run this one. Pray, there we go. We have a nice curve, we have a report, we've got Accuracy, that's better than a coin flip. Our boss is very pleased with our ML model. Time to go for VC funding. <laughs> Next, you've been told you need to orchestrate this. So you have a look online, you see Argo Workflows is the very best uh, workflow orchestrator that you could ever use. That's why we're all here. Uh, so you start looking into that and um, you're in Python land you see YAML is everywhere in these docs, but I want to keep using Python. So you found Hera, and you realize that you need to turn this script into a bunch of functions. So here, this is how you might do it. You start taking the uh, data set path, you start returning some values, and then the script that runs it down here. Let's prove that this is doing exactly the same. Cross your fingers. Typing with one hand is slow. There we go, plot, oh, and we've now changed it so the plot goes to a file. So if I were to open that, it is still there, it is still the same shape. And our accuracy is still 75. And now you've got your functions, you start following the Hera documentation written by myself, it's really good. So, <laughs> who said that? Um, and now you've got a workflow, and you've got all these funky things coming in from Hera workflows. DAGs, artifacts, loaders, what does all this mean? I have no idea, I wrote it myself. The image, you'll see this shorthand that we were using earlier, an environment variable called image name, or this special image that I've built for this talk and a blog that I wrote earlier. Um, script annotations is like a experimental feature that we use in Hero, it's like these cutting edge, amazing features, and this one's about to graduate, so uh, it's almost there. Um, and then we set the default for scripts to be the runner script constructor. And then our functions start looking a little bit different with this annotated type. So you'll see before this wasn't that complex, it was a data set path, but now we need to tell it, this is being fetched from S3, and once S3 is involved, it gets a little bit complicated, even though this is running locally on Docker desktop. 
uh, just to prove that this is vaguely doing something similar, but we don't need to submit it at the end because instead we're building a workflow. And here's the DAG that was featured in the slides just now, extended a little bit with the extra make predictions and evaluate. And if we want to prove that it's, it can build YAML, uh, one sec. We can output some YAML to a file. I did that earlier and it's now there. And we can have a look, start exploring why people don't like to use YAML. This is horrible. This is still horrible. More horrible. Okay, going back to the Python. Uh, we have this workflow. We want to run it. Uh, in this make file, I've got a couple of targets. The make run offline is going to be a little faster. So I do that. Oh, I've now got a workflow. If I open that, here's one I made not earlier, actually. This is live. Uh, we'll see how long that takes, but yeah, it starts loading things in. We've got a nice visualization on the UI. We've got a data set path, input name. We've got the diabetes.csv, show it anyway. There you go, proven that there are numbers in there. We load and split the data set. We can start looking at inputs and outputs. So those are the numbers still. Whoops, this one, here we go. Go back here. Uh, feature scaling, that turns it into really long numbers. There you go. And then we train a model that's binary. You can't read it. There's no translation. Uh, then we make some predictions. So this is some zeros and ones saying which outcome the model thinks it is. Then finally, we evaluate. And the reason we turned the curve into a file earlier is that we can now output on the UI directly. And it does still look the same. We have the report as well. And I think that's the end of the demo. Let's see if I can put this back. OK, I'll just read from the slide. So the key takeaways today, number one, Hera can supercharge the Python experience on Argo workflows. Number two, you should definitely use the Hera runner to unlock the full potential and power of Hera. And number three, you should also definitely automate developer setup and CI CD to avoid messing about all the time. Too long didn't read if you're still jet lagged like me. Use Hera to easily scale your data science workloads on Argo workflows. Uh, if you want to connect with us, Flav, come back, co-maintainer. Us, meaning not just me, uh, we're on the Argo Proj Labs Hera, uh, our docs are hera.readthedocs.io, and we also hang out on the CNCF Slack in the Hera Argo SDK channel. We also have free stuff, this talk, some examples, also at talk demos on the PipeKit GitHub, and the PipeKit free workflow metrics for Argo workflows. I'll give you a second to take a photo, because those are scannable. They do go to real links. And if you want to chat with us, we're at the booth T33. And you can also use this QR code to book a free call. Any questions? One over there. Where is it? Oh, right here. Um, thank you both. You had mentioned a uh, versioned workflow template. And I was just curious for clarification on that. Do you mean? a workflow template that is using specific pinned container image versions within it, or is there a different meaning to versioned workflow template? The first. Uh, okay. Basically, you can use the Python image. It's going to be versioned inside that. And then you'll release a workflow template that has a version. And as long as you don't replace that in place, you'll have the same image that's being used from your uh, Python images. Anyone else? Planted questions, anyone? Plenty. No? Kaylin? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. you got one here. Hold on. Hey. So I was just wondering, you know, uh, how many workflows do you spin up, you know, in your usual day to day scenarios? At once? I mean, you know, 100, 500, 1,000. I signed an NDA. <laughs> no, I, I'm on more of like the Python side rather than infrastructure side. So you could ask about the CI and stuff, and that's being run every day. Probably tens to hundreds of those. They have loads of nodes. Do you want to? We we gave a talk, I think, um, in Amsterdam last year, in which we covered a, a therapeutic use case on Argo workflows, 
And that talk covers how we ran hundreds of workflows um, in a very spiky manner. So they were not like running consistently. It would just like have quiet periods of running five to 10 workflows, let's say every hour or per day. And then all of a sudden it would just like spike up to hundreds of them. Um, so it, it definitely scales to, to that. There are some challenges with ETCD depending on the size of your workflow. So you sometimes have to like break them apart depending on what you're actually trying to do. But other than that, I haven't seen issues with scaling up to thousands. Thanks. All right, we have maybe time for one more, if there's one. No, going once, twice. All right, thank you.